We are recording right. <coughs> oh, I'm so lit right now. What is going on, dudes? This is Baby the Gamer, and welcome back to another FNAF reaction. So we are here with part two to the Oof Troops, an undeniably canon Five Nights at Freddy's timeline. The first one was amazing. I laughed my friggin' booty off. The reaction to it did very well on the channel, and we have part two, and it's 30 minutes long, so I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Everything will be linked in the description down below so you can check everything out for yourself. Obviously, along with the Oof Troops channel, Please go subscribe if you enjoy this. I might need to turn these off. It's so freaking bright in my face. So I'm gonna click play on this bad boy. And three, two, one. Boom. Hello again. Hi. I've kept you waiting long enough. Too long, oof. For... Oh, it's you. Where are they? <laughs> Corner sheet. You just wanted their chair. You took. I'm right, sitting in my chair. Enough. You ain't taking my now chair, that bro. That's settled. Let's jump back and do the most accurate portrayal of the FNAF timeline you'll ever hear. I am very excited. <laughs> and then the night we can't even have time live part two. Hey, William that's when I was born. Sitting in the safe room of the abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, finally got done writhing in pain from his spring lock failure. I don't he think that was the, the right time. He thought himself back into society, but before he could make a decision on that front, <laughs> My the ghost Richard. of the missing children reappeared before him. Instead of attacking him, though, it seemed they had called it even to ask for a favor. They were very bored, and realized that Springtrap was probably able to figure out how to convert a camera monitor into a TV. Springtrap agreed to do this for them, given he was just as bored as they were. Unfortunately, <laughs> there was no practical way to get any real channels set up with the materials they had, so everyone had to settle with watching the same three VHS tapes of Seinfeld at <laughs> As time went on elsewhere in Hurricane, Henry Emily began to- Torture! Real torture. It had been at least a week since he had shut down Freddy's, and he already tanked his finances within that time. So, Henry looked for another option. The city permanently banned him from opening a new business, but they never said anything about running an existing one. He immediately ran to the Afton household to beg William for a manager's position at Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals. When he got there, however, Michael Afton opened the door. You fired me. <laughs> I also fired your father. Where is he? He said something about vandalizing your house. Hasn't come back since. Uh now leave. Out of options, Henry decided he'd try to sue Afton Robotics How to, to sue someone. To the Purple guy's on the- <laughs> To his surprise, this actually went smoothly. The only person oh. William had left to handle something like this was rather eager to have a boss again. So, he willingly let Henry win the case to absorb the company into Fazbear Entertainment. But... Despite the success, Henry was still worried that William might come back and ruin things for him. So, he decided to take measures to ensure that he couldn't. After checking his house and seeing that nothing was vandalized, Henry's next idea was to check the abandoned Freddy's location. Knowing William, it was very likely that the place was broken into for nefarious purposes. With that in mind, Henry barged into the building and followed the trail of Seinfeld sounds until he found <laughs> a spring trap. Unfazed by his old friend being a corpse rabbit now, Henry fully explained that he seized control of Afton Robotics and was capitalizing off of William's work. This made Springtrap livid and the two started to settle things the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Henry, being much more nimble than the walking corpse, managed to grab Foxy's dismembered leg and bash Springtrap in the shins before knocking him out. <laughs> Fearing the possibility that Springtrap would try to sue Henry back, oh he took God. this opportunity to throw him into the safe room and board it up. Now, there was no way William could retake his own company. Oh Henry's confidence had never been already. stronger, so he raced back into his new office to try and figure out why he couldn't break a 50 properly. What he didn't realize was that one of the animatronics, Ballora, had snuck up behind him to figure out what the sound of failure was all about. Fed up with Henry's incompetence, Ballora <laughs> pushed him out of his chair to manage finances herself. What? Henry realized what a great convenience this was, so he left her to it and went off to inspect the other animatronics. Turns out, he hated them. With everyone running around violently while Baby rambled on about the different equipment in the facility, Henry realized he would not be able to put up with the animatronics having this much freedom. As a result, he implemented remote-controlled shock collars on all of them to get them to leave him alone. Except Alora, she was too intimidating for him. The others weren't going to tolerate this, so Baby hatched a plan to get them all out of there. Ish. Although she had a direct line of contact with Funtime Freddy and Foxy, they needed to break into Henry's office to get Alora. Right as they were about to bash the door in, Ballora stormed out as she had just discovered Henry wasn't going to pay her. 
Suddenly well, something clicked in baby's What's mind. she gonna use the money Last for? Time she had seen something <laughs> like this was when her mother, Eleanor Schmidt, found out she'd have to pay child support for William. Clearly, this was the same person. Although Ballora initially wasn't interested in listening to anyone, Baby used her number one strategy to get her mother to do anything. <laughs> hey, dummy. I bet you can't help us escape. <laughs> adequately motivated to prove Baby wrong, immediately led the charge to the elevator. Unfortunately, they were all far too big to fit inside, and Henry managed Damn, to catch the Freddy's ball before they could massive. figure out a solution. After this incident, he decided to fire Ballora as a financial advisor and sacrificed an employee to get a shock collar on her. Now that he was down an engineer, Henry decided to open up job applications for someone to replace him. To ensure that people would actually know about this, Henry made a commercial to advertise the employment opportunity to only the most valuable TV channels. This proceeded to interrupt Michael Afton's 3.27 a.m. viewing of his favorite soap opera. Seeing <laughs> Henry advertising his father's business confused and irritated Michael, so he went to the kitchen to wait out the advertisement. As he stood there, though, Mike noticed a note on the fridge William had left before his disappearance. This was when he learned the truth of what happened to his sister, something he never actually thought about until right then. After several weeks of isolation, Michael had become rather delusional, so he interpreted this note as a direct request from William. Now, with proper motivation and the desire to please his father, wherever he may be, Michael took it upon himself to get a deadly job once more. To ensure that Henry actually let him land the job, Michael made a point to bring deodorant with him so it wouldn't be a problem this time. <laughs> odor, yeah, due to though, odor. <laughs> Michael just threatened to deactivate the animatronics again, and that was enough to scare Henry into accepting him. <laughs> sure. Meanwhile, the Funtime animatronics began growing restless. Bitter that William Afton had apparently left them to be stuck under Henry's management, they began holding it against him and agreed to take revenge if he ever came back. Once Michael had arrived at the facility on his first night, Baby took immediate notice that he looked similar enough to William that it was probably the same person. After thinking what? about how to take advantage of the situation, she hatched an elaborate scheme to both escape and greatly inconvenience William. Ballora, of course, was completely on board with this plan. Any effort to spite her ex-husband was worthwhile in her eyes, so there was no issue there. Funtime Foxy was very motivated to assist in this plan as well likely due to an instinctive knowledge that he only existed to be inferior to the other animatronics. Uh. Lastly, Funtime Freddy agreed to the plan not out of an existing grudge or anything, but just because it sounded like a pretty fun time. The next night, uh, with everyone you're in funny. the mission, the mission funny. was underway. First, Baby sent out her bitty babs to figure out how tall William was. Instead, <laughs> they just wanted to chew on him, so she intervened and helped him hide under the desk until they got bored. When that didn't work, Funtime Freddy got out. So true, all of it. This is so true. The wiring until it caused a power outage. Then, <laughs> as William crawled through Ballora Gallery to get to the electric room, Ballora would taunt him with her masterful ballet routine and vague hints at her past frustrations with him. As this flew over his head, she gave up and let Funtime Freddy take over. Unfortunately, Bon Bon was programmed to gaslight Freddy at a moment's notice. As a result, Freddy was powerless to stop William from rebooting the power generator, and he got away once again. The next day, Baby framed Freddy for a robbery that some technicians were talking about that morning. So, he was deactivated for psychological repairs while Bon Bon tried to attack William alone. Given Bon Bon was incredibly small, this strategy was fruitless. However, <laughs> the animatronics finally had a moment of success as Funtime Foxy jumped William and helped Baby stuff him into a prototype springlock suit. She was pretty sure it would guilt trip William, but it seemed to have no significance to him. Despite how absurdly risky this was, it was the only way to keep him still until they could scope out his measurements. What After is that suit? After day of nobody noticing anything wrong, Ballora deliberately acted out so she could smuggle her mini Renas to the scooping room. After Ballora's stomach cavity was opened by the scooper, the mini Renas crawled out and began measuring William's height. For reasons they weren't moving <laughs> on, they also needed to crawl down his throat and measure his insides as well. As he frantically kept the spring locks from snapping, they got all their work done and gave Baby the go-ahead to let him out. On the final day of their plan, <laughs> Baby and Foxy eyes. gathered the endoskeletons of Freddy and Ballora and piled them into the scooping room. Once that was done, they got a spare endoskeleton nicknamed Yendo to scoop them and fuse them all together. Sure, he'd get left behind, but Yendo didn't really have issues with the management of the facility, so he was fine staying. After perfectly aligning their body with the measurements they gathered, he used some of their leftover pieces to make dummies that would both look like terrifying casualties and trick the hand unit system into thinking every animatronic was in their proper place. Although the new Funtime amalgamation didn't really need a name, they thought it'd be fun to come up with one anyway. Their best idea was a pun, so they stuck with that and called themselves Ennard. So, that night, Ennard placed Baby Shell onto the parts and service conveyor belt and waited for William to show up. 
It is a weird did, name. Baby started throwing herself a pity party and told William that to help her, he needed to follow her instructions exactly. Everything was finally going smoothly. But this was never William. This was Michael, and Michael had a bit of a problem with taking Whoa, orders. Whoa, no him. way! So when Baby started giving him directions to the scooping room, he just went the exact opposite way. This led him to Henry's private room, which William previously used for most of his remnant research, nightmare chamber monitoring, and Scup. early forms of online mischief. Ennard was very displeased with this turn of events, thinking William was doing this just to mess with them. After an unnecessary detour to grab a silly mask, they snuck into the back area of the private room. Once inside, Ennard started making it very obvious who they thought Michael was. Mike, relieved that this was all just a big misunderstanding, explained that he was just William's son. Ennard, now reconsidering their initial plan, asked if there was any way for them to still be free from Henry's terrible management. Without a second thought, Mike snuck them home with him, and the semi-reunited <laughs> family lived a long, happy life. Uh. Everything was finally going smoothly. Although they incorrectly assumed that this was William, Michael still followed Baby's commands exactly as she instructed. Although he was getting Wait, tired, just of this, he was desperate to finally free his sister. When he arrived at the scooping room, Ennard explained their true goal. They wanted to look just like Michael. Mike, not really getting the hint, assumed he was being complimented for his good looks and began writing an autograph. While Mike uh. was occupied, Ennard activated the scooper and started Ooh. evacuating Michael's organs and skeleton before crawling inside his skin. Once this was That's done, so they creepy. immediately waltzed out the elevator and stole Mike's rightfully earned employee bonus before scarfing it down in one bite. Getting back to Michael's house, Ennard realized they had nothing to really do with their time, so they began a habit of socializing with all of the neighbors every day. They became quite popular with everyone, but unfortunately, <laughs> they forgot that the human body decomposes when it's missing everything that keeps it alive. What truly alerted them that they made a big mistake, though, was that all of the neighbors had been calling them Michael this entire time. Realizing that they had eviscerated an innocent man's body to play glorified dress-up, they ejected themselves from his skin and Baby coughed up some remnant for him to survive. Michael had absolutely no clue what was going on, but after hearing Baby incessantly tell him he wouldn't die, he finally possessed his newfound purple skin and walked he off. He won't die. He still had no bones. Now shunned by that the weird. for his decomposing body, Michael became a recluse. Forcefully isolated from society, he crafted a crude effigy of William to constantly talk to and feel appreciated by. However, this didn't satisfy Michael. As the years passed, he grew more and more desperate for emotional support, so he decided he wanted to create an animatronic father figure to replace William. Unfortunately, Mike couldn't just go out and buy the materials needed to do this, so he prioritized a different goal. He wanted to restore his body to be able to leave his house. Looking at some preserved meat in his freezer, he realized that he could possibly engineer the refrigerator to fully regenerate his organs. It wouldn't be easy, but it had a chance to work. Where are all By his the organs? Arrival of the new millennium, Henry shut down Fazbear Entertainment for good. Ever since the animatronics escaped, Henry had to resort to utilizing the abandoned animatronics as replacements. Sadly, Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals just couldn't garner the appeal it once had without the original fun times. By the time Henry finally rebranded the company as Chica's Party World and made somewhat competent replacements for the fun times, it was already too late. The company's reputation floundered and there was no saving it. So, for the next couple decades, Henry resorted to being a door-to-door -door salesman to try and forget his past failures. After all this time, urban legends about the abandoned Freddy's locations began spreading across Hurricane. By 2022, a man legally shifts? named Phone Dude caught wind of these rumors and started Phone getting Phone Dude. His father, Phone Guy, had a very near and dear character to his heart, <laughs> Foxy. However, Fazbear Entertainment always showed the most unnecessary of hatred to the character, leading Phone Guy down a depressive spiral for years until his disappearance. Phone Dude knew what he had to do. He needed to avenge his father and assassinate the founders of the company for treating Foxy so poorly. To his amazement, Henry showed up at his door one day trying to sell him some old camera equipment. This was perfect. On the spot, Phone Dude told Henry his grand vision for a horror attraction based on Freddy's and invited this is him so to ridiculous. play the part of a helpless security guard. Henry, delighted at the idea of finally making money again, happily agreed to relive his traumatic <clears throat> Fortnite. for a quick buck. With that, that's definitely around in this time. Phone Dude prepared his master plan. After striking a deal with a local amusement park to open Fazbear's Fright within their space, Phone Dude carefully designed the building to be wired so horrifically it was bound to catch on fire. To really enhance the experience, he also bought out all of Henry's ancient camera equipment to make it near impossible to monitor the place. By March of 2023, the horror attraction was just about ready to open. All nice. that was left was to find the other founder of the company, William Afton. 
Drawing a blank on how to find him, Phone Dude asked Henry if he knew of his old partner's whereabouts. Henry attempted to play coy, but somehow gave perfect directions to the abandoned Freddy's location instead. Phone Dude, a little confused by this answer, decided it was worth a shot and made his way to the building to pry William out of there. He has a After foxy keychain. I have a foxy keychain on my Finding nothing but Seinfeld tapes and dismembered parts, he suddenly heard an angry shout coming from the boarded-up safe room. After kicking down the door, he saw a frustrated animatronic picking <laughs> up an old arcade machine. After taking a brief look at the high scores, Phone Dude tackled Redacted. him and threw him into his room. <laughs> Fascinated by how much the world advanced, Springtrap hammered Phone Dude with questions about what all had changed. Not really caring enough to talk to him, Phone Dude threw Springtrap a smartphone and told him to go crazy. Springtrap immediately adapted to this new technology and really put himself out there. <laughs> After they arrived at the attraction, Phone Dude shot Springtrap with bear tranquilizer and I don't him to the building think care in the world. That would work. Once Henry on him. clocked in for his second night on the job, Phone Dude told him he had found a real animatronic rather than William to try He'd and sleep for night repeat. Real nice. Intentions. Nice. After that, he played some old recordings of Phone Guy on the to power. To trip Henry before the inevitable oh demolition God. of Fazbear's fright. Henry did not notice. Springtrap, horrifically delirious, decided to try and walk off the tranquilizer by taking a stroll through the building. Tripping over several knickknacks from his old restaurants, began to reminisce about his creations so much that they appeared before him as phantoms. He wasn't too happy with the selection of characters that appeared, but after ripping off Foxy's hook, he decided to leave well enough alone. After the phantoms took a gander at the building, they all lit themselves on fire in an attempt oh. to warn Springtrap that something was going to go wrong. He wasn't aware enough to take the hint though, so he just ignored them and kept walking. <laughs> As he approached the office, he was suddenly shocked into furious lucidity with just one glance at the man behind the window. Springtrap's swelling rage over being trapped in the safe room playing pack and pal for 30 years was enough for him to wage war against Henry. Henry, however, hadn't even noticed Springtrap standing there. With the awful ventilation in the building, he was in the middle of hallucinating dreams of animatronics and janitors phasing through walls to give ghosts cake. By the time he jolted back to consciousness, the phantoms had been bribed to Springtrap's cause and started a full assault on all the attraction's equipment. Luckily, Henry was great at rebooting things that should have stopped operating already, so this was no problem. I don't now think it- fueled by okay. the thrill of battle, Henry <laughs> okay. kept coming back to Fazbear's Fright to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Springtrap. Due to the lack of oxygen, though, Henry couldn't really fight him head-on. Instead, Henry resorted to mildly disorienting Springtrap's sense of direction with clips of Balloon Boy's voice. This was pretty obviously a trick, but Springtrap didn't want to miss the chance to see his greatest creation. <laughs> why? Why no is there a poster of Chica sure saying why? This wasted a lot of time. Eventually, though, he did successfully make his way to the office, just to be met with Henry frantically tapping the wall tiles. <clears throat> Unfortunately, <laughs> before Springtrap could give him a long-awaited death stare, Henry's camera monitor short circuited <laughs> the ball the tiles, the Easter egg. In record time, the entire building was oh on fire God. and the place was caving in. While the phantoms yelled at them with phrases such as, We told you so, Henry and Springtrap suddenly realized the attraction was a setup. They were not about to bone dude. Else kill them before they could kill each other. Let's go get bone dude. Running. As soon as they escaped the front door, it was amazing. had completely erupted. Oh bone dude, who had been camping outside all week, was positively distraught. While he was reevaluating his choice to let random chance decide the fate of his victims, a foxy mask fell in front of him and burst into flames. Realizing he had disgraced his bloodline with his failure, Phone Dude exiled himself from society for the rest of his days. After Henry and Springtrap gathered their bearings, the local news department raced over to the wreckage and started Hurricane taking photos Screamer. of their dying newspaper. To avoid being sold at an auction, the duo played dead under some rubble until everyone left. Once everybody was gone and the smoke cleared, the former partners looked at each other in awkward silence, waiting for the other to break the truce. After about 32 seconds, Henry grabbed the wire sticking out of Springtrap's ear, got it to spark, and then lit Springtrap's pants on fire before running away. <laughs> Springtrap, distraught and ashamed by this attack, decided the only way to redeem himself would be to find a replacement for his entire suit. Luckily for him, Springtrap remembered he still had a backup fursuit he had left they at Fender's family diner. After a he few lit days, his pants he finally on got fire. inside and realized why it was abandoned there to begin with. That oh. thing was occupied. Oh, Springtrap God. Springtrap was too embarrassed now to let this stop him, though, so he proceeded to tear the costume off of Harold the Janitor's skeleton. Once this was done, he just needed to get rid of his current suit. His most rational decision was to ram himself against the wall until it fell apart. This worked a bit too effectively, and he managed to break most of his left arm off by mistake. He decided this was good enough, so he went ahead and put on the suit, 
Worried that everyone would only know the name Springtrap as the animatronic with no pants, though, he reluctantly made the call Changed to go back his to name. the name William Afton to avoid scrutiny. Bidding Aww. a solemn farewell to his favorite fursuit, William departed from Fredbear's to aimlessly wander Hurricane. Meanwhile, at the Fazbear's Fright auction, the ghosts of the missing children decided it was time to say goodbye to Hurricane and pass on to whatever was to come. So, Charlie put together one last party in a purgatory pizzeria for them all to celebrate a new beginning. However, conflict arose very quickly. Charlie didn't actually know how to make a good tasting cake with only remnant and frosting, so she quickly thought of a way to save herself embarrassment. Everyone look, it's, uh, Billy Martin. Insulted by what they assumed was a rude prank, all of the children ditched Charlie to go back to haunting Hurricane. <laughs> Casty decided to reconvene with Andrew, who was just chilling at the rejects table wearing an alligator mask. She immediately ripped it off his face and told him to hop onto her shoulders. Once he agreed, they went back to terrorizing Hurricane as their ghostly fusion body, Golden Freddy. Charlie, with nobody to brave the unknown with, chickened out and repossessed the puppet, who was still perfectly intact after all this time. The other four children, however, had to figure out a new vessel to possess. Since all of their original suits were split up in the auction, they preferred finding something to stick together in. Luckily for them, they were able to find a pile of wires slithering around in the sewers and possessed it. This turned out to be Ennard, and four new spirits intruding on their existence caused quite a lot of discomfort. Ballora, furious that she had to babysit four new children, decided it was time for her own daughter to move out. After briefly conspiring with the children, she tugged out a random wire and successfully ejected Baby on her first try. This wound up being a bad decision on Ballora's part, as without Baby to call the shots, the missing children established an oligarchy. Once they successfully <laughs> silenced Ballora, they hightailed it over to the abandoned Chica's party world in search of some decoration to make This is amazing, can I just say that real After quick? Some searching, they found Yendo, who tried proudly showing off his cheap plastic shell to what he assumed were his old friends. Instead, Ennard lit him on fire and stole his melted remains afterward, now dubbing themselves Molten Freddy. Baby, meanwhile, had followed them to the building with the same general idea. After a quick dumpster dive, she was able to find enough garbage to reconstruct her body. With that, she quickly came up with the name Scrap Baby, just in case her condition wasn't obvious. Within just a day, Hurricane's cryptid count jumped from one to six. This cryptid was more than count. enough to catch Henry's attention, and he felt a little bit responsible for this mess. Old guy Henry in question. To course correct the fate of Utah and make his legacy a little less awful. So, he stole a boatload of old animatronics, quickly crafted some new ones, and bought oh out God. an empty building under William Afton's name to avoid legal attention. Henry felt inspired by Phone Dude's failed assassination attempt on him, and he decided to steal the idea. But make it actually work this time. Mm -mm. All he had to do was revitalize his company, attract families to his new pizzeria, and if the deadly animatronics showed up, set the place on fire. Easy. But first, he needed to hire a manager to do the actual work for him, and act as a shield against unwanted legal attention. That's where we come in. Out of times. Expecting this job to go smoothly, while simultaneously giving no clear instructions as to what he wanted, several managers came to work and were promptly fired for various reasons. With one listening to Henry's top secret diary, another being too chicken to salvage the animatronics, and it's yet shaggy. another getting to play sued for kicks and giggles, every oh. manager's run ended up in disaster. Henry was at a loss as to who could possibly run this place competently and accidentally do exactly what he wanted. Luckily, this pizzeria was built right in front of Michael Afton's house. Mike had made incredible strides in his refrigerator regeneration research. After all this time, he had finally grown back, at least, some of his organs. He wasn't really sure which ones, but he felt healthy enough to finally go outside. With a promising job opportunity right at his doorstep, he excitedly signed on to become the manager of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. The building, having been horrendously downsized after all of the managerial failures that preceded Mike's arrival, was nothing more than a small shack with nothing inside. Luckily, you Mike gotta was build it. with the Afton genes of incredible financial literacy. Every day, he restored a portion of the restaurant to its former glory. Not only that, each night an animatronic would pop up in the alley to check out what was going on, and Michael got paid to salvage each one and throw them in the vents. First, Molten Freddy. Hearing about a new pizzeria excited them. Are we gonna get a part three, or is it gonna like try to cover everything up until security breach? Woman. With this new location, though, they could perhaps find some new, separate bodies to possess and make use of the complete collection of Seinfeld episodes they robbed from someone's house. Stop. Mike, seeing them so proud of a show that wasn't his favorite, lit the collection on fire and walked away. Molten Freddy, Good job. Probably the best. Spirits now shattered, trailed behind him in a desperate quest for revenge. 
The next night, Michael was elated to find that the animatronic before him was William. He didn't particularly expect his father to return after all this time as a moldy rabbit, but he'd take what he could get. Unfortunately, William didn't really care. He just bragged about how he knew this pizzeria was a trap, given that there were fire hazard signs all over the place. <laughs> after that, he started trying to workshop new names for himself, such as Scrap Trap with Michael to Electric know Boogaloo? Michael I like that one. I saw Burn Trap in there. The grand reunions. So, he tased William and threw him into Henry's <laughs> office to make it his problem. The next day, Scrap Baby finally arrived at the pizzeria. Having done just about everything on our bucket list, from becoming Utah's roller skating champion to inspiring an entire fashion craze, she decided that the most reasonable next step was to start murdering people with a giant claw. Nice. She had already visited once before to assassinate one of the previous managers, oh my gosh. so she figured that this would be a piece of cake. To her disappointment, Michael was prepared for this and signed a restraining order on her. Since she already came all this way, though, she just wandered into the ventilation system to try and convince herself this entire- I saw him! It's Squidward! Gift for her. At this point, William finally regained consciousness and immediately tried to attack Henry. Henry, without a care in the world, just threatened William with a lighter and told him about his newest creation. After having it on his to-do list for decades, he finally created a beautiful animatronic named Lefty. Not Lefty. only that, it actually managed to capture the puppet. Unfortunately, Henry only found out the puppet was his daughter after he trapped her inside a plastic bear, and he didn't really know how to let her out. I was even going to sell it to your son for five dollars, but Michael wound up salvaging it. I may or may not be down five thousand instead. You... you gave him five thousand dollars? Yes. Now I'm bankrupt again. Enraged that Michael robbed him of the chance to finally get his five dollars back, William scrambled into the vents to try and assassinate his son. Mike was oh an expert God. at keeping everyone at bay, though, and after a few more days of unmatched success with his pizzeria, he got his pickles. The most important day of his career. This, however, is when got Scrap Baby decided to gloat about being stuck there. She was really desperate to justify any reason for staying this long, so she just tried pushing the narrative that William set this place up for her so she could kill children and make him proud. Nobody believed her, seeing as William was right there with no stake in this other than getting his money. Tired of listening to Baby ramble, Henry interrupted her and finally delivered a speech he had been rehearsing for the past month or so. Although he mostly just made guesses about everyone's motivations for being there, all the animatronics were impressed by his performance. So much so that they didn't even notice that the building was on fire. <laughs> Michael, only paying attention when Henry mentioned an exit planned for him, immediately rushed out of there before the fire could kill him. No the way. Smoke did get to him okay. a little bit, though, and he wound up coughing up some stray remnant. Hopefully he didn't need that. The others, however, weren't so lucky. Soon, each and every one of the animatronics were destroyed as the building was engulfed in flames. With that, Henry finally ended the horrific legacy of Fazbear Entertainment. Just kidding. <laughs> After the smoke cleared, everyone in Hurricane arrived at the ruins of the pizzeria to see what had happened. While random civilians took off with the remaining animatronics and games that survived the fire, a rescue team discovered a body in the ventilation system and rushed it to the oh, hospital. God. Not really questioning why this clearly charred corpse was wearing a rabbit suit, the doctor accepted it as a patient and diagnosed it with a coma. While the hospital searched for anyone that actually knew who this was, a single visitor showed up that they just kind of assumed was a relative. Golden Freddy. <laughs> when they arrived at the patient's bedside, they immediately knew it was William Afton and plunged into his mind to cause some crazy nightmares. William, now dreaming about a character select screen of various animatronics he was <laughs> creating, decided that the best course of action was to fight them all at once in their most deadly state. Unbeknownst to him, of course, this 50, was a setup mode. by Cassidy and Andrew. Oh Andrew never God. got to take revenge on William like all the other kids did, so he begged Cassidy to drag everyone she knew away from the peaceful afterlife to help torture William in his sleep. The most insidious part of this plan, however, was taking the newest iteration of Foxy they could find and making him William's only ally in this nightmare. Eventually, William was conditioned to finally appreciate Foxy's existence, which was the most <laughs> severe punishment the Golden Duo could imagine for him. After getting the satisfaction of killing William over and over again, Andrew started getting a bit full of himself and started taking credit for all of the work Casty had put in. Not only that, but he got so self-absorbed that he regarded himself as the one you should not have killed. Cassidy wasn't having any of that, so after William somehow beat them at their own game, <laughs> Peace. she ditched Andrew and everyone else followed suit. When William awoke, he realized Michael was wheeling him out of the hospital. Excited that he somehow avoided all the possible consequences of his actions, he began to concoct some brand new schemes. Right as Michael shoved him back into the wrecked pizzeria and walked home. Michael had gotten what he needed from his father. 
In fact, he got everything he needed from just about everyone. Getting to manage a successful Freddy's was one of the best experiences he ever had, and he wasn't satisfied with the place being destroyed after only a week. He created a new plan, and with everyone out of his way, he bought the rights to the defunct Fazbear Entertainment and began constructing his new bear-themed empire. With that, we reach the end of this chapter of the timeline. So there is going to be a part three. There's got to be. What? Another cliffhanger? Yes, <laughs> yes. There's still much to unravel, and I must vanish again to make preparations. We're approaching the end, don't you worry. Just hope that Ferdinand doesn't tamper with anything. That'd certainly be inconvenient. Speaking of which, he must have left while we weren't looking. Oh well, it'll be fine. All right, goodbye. Until next <laughs> time. Yes. Oh, man. Oh. What's this? The Remnant. Oh. What is that? What is that? Dude. I love these so much. That was like so good. Well, 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 that was a treat as they all are. So that there was part two to the Oof Troops little animated series, which so far they're just, it's so funny. It's so funny and undeniably canon Five Nights at Freddy's timeline. I can't wait for part three. It's coming. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and everything will be linked in the description down below so you can check everything out for yourself. Obviously, along with the Oof Troops channel, please go subscribe. He deserves it. He puts so much work into this. It's almost already got like 200 and 30,000 views. It probably has over that by now within 24 hours. That's fantastic. That is all I have for today. I hope everybody has an amazing holiday and a Merry Christmas, and I will see you in the next video. So, bye!